you have fond memories of high school football? I do. You hear it all the time. I always tell kids it's this is as fun as it gets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't even get in a stance anymore. Don't, don't the best time of his that. life played out right here on the football field at North Attleboro right. High. If, if I'm a guard, right, where would I would be over here? Yeah, like just the, like oh. that. <laughs> Chris Sullivan, yeah. a towering figure, built tough. He was on his way. Now recruiters are knocking down the door big time. Major college bids for so do you do you recognize this guy? Do you remember this guy? I think, it, you know, I'm still the same person, I th but I had a period where I get lost. Chris got lost just as he had found success. He went from high school to BC, started 48 consecutive games. The Patriots came calling, drafting the hometown boy in the fourth round. You know, I always tell people it wasn't a dream. You know, I'm always, I've always been an uptight, kind of anxious person. I never thought I was good at anything. Four seasons with the Pats, then Chris followed the money to Pittsburgh, a decision he now calls the worst he's ever made. I blew up my back the first day at camp. It was the following year I broke my wrist. Once again, tried to play through it. I started spiraling around that time because I couldn't deal with not living up to at least my expectation. Spiraling, drinking more, Chris was done with the Steelers. Then the Patriots called again, and number 74 was back with his home team. But the anxiety he always had turned into depression. And I started buying pills at the time, not thinking anything of it. Pills helping Chris get through the season and on to Super Bowl 36. But I was pretty gone by that point. I was, you wouldn't be able to tell. And I can remember the confetti coming down. I can remember being mad I left my pills in the hotel. And it's crazy to think I didn't enjoy one second of it. Now a Super Bowl champion, now a full-blown addict. I didn't pitch it. This is what an addict looked like. It looks like me. You know, it looks like doctors, lawyers, teachers, you name it. A few months later, the champs got their rings. So this like the first night I had it. I spent the night in jail. And Chris got arrested, his first OUI. He was finished with football for good. Six months after taking my first pill, I was like, I'm gonna give it up. The next six years were turmoil. More drugs, heroin, normally weighed around 300 pounds. He was barely half that weight. Sometimes he couldn't even walk. Like I had been sectioned to Bridgewater and five OUIs, I'd been put in jail, I'd been to 15 rehabs, I had been to the emergency room eight times by ambulance. The people who loved him couldn't take it anymore. And my mother was standing over my bed, not begging, asking God to take me. She couldn't go through it anymore. That next day was December 15th, 2008. I had a nervous breakdown on the couch in North Arbor. I was crying like a two-year-old. I was bawling, I was shaking. By yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I had no heat, nothing, no cable. I just had my poor bulldog. A friend who had been trying to get him help stopped by. The time was right. Chris knew he was going to rehab for the last time. I needed to go through that at that point in my life. Yeah, and I was ashamed for a while. I mean, for a couple of years, but you know, I mean, I'm not ashamed anymore. Getting clean and staying clean is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Chris's private battle, now something that's very public. He talks at schools all across the country, embraces every opportunity to try and set the next generation on a different path. It's hopefully getting to the kids before that decision comes up, before the first time a pill or a joint or whatever is put in front of them, because I know for me, once I started taking that pill, I was done. Like, the decision was made. Does it still fit? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. I always tell people at schools, this is what matters. So I carry this? this, this is my seven, eight years sober chip. Eight, and and it, it signifies? Eight and a half years sober. I always tell people you can keep this, you can't take this. You know, in a second I would give this away. This means a lot to me, but this means a lot more. Chris looks back now knowing he lost so much. I know I could have played a few more years in the NFL. But that he's also gained. Married now with a supportive family, learning to live each moment of life as it comes. Do you like yourself now? I struggle with that, but um, I'm getting better. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm getting more comfortable with myself. I don't think I've ever in my life been comfortable in my own skin and I'm finally getting there. He's getting better. Chris said he always tried to stay off the radar. If a guy is as tall as he is, right, as big as he is, he can stay off the radar. He tried to stay off the radar in football and everything he does. He's had to overcome anxiety to tell a story. He was nervous to go on camera, but he was perfectly natural was telling so a story, honest. wasn't he? Yes. And he just hopes it can make a difference for someone. I bet it will, yeah. for sure. We wish him the best.